Hey, what's up YouTube? Chris Gardner here, and I've got a new video on Aurora HDR. This is 2019 version. Uh, we are talking about this in January 2021, and this is pretty much, you know, from a real estate photographer's point of view and how you might use it to batch edit your photos from a typical photo shoot. First, we will get started on the batch processing as far as Aurora goes. So it's actually a really great and, you know, versatile system for that in that you can have, you know, three batches of two mixed in with fives and it's pretty easy to manage it. Where other software might make, make you select by the whole collection. So let's just say I drag this in, we will go batch processing, grab this bunch, boom. It's going to figure out what to do. It's also great that it can take um, raw files, so that's good. Um, now I know that all of these were three, and so that's the other thing is, you know, it is versatile, but at the same time it can get mixed up. Right now it does pretty good. If let's say you knew one of these, um, one of these collections wasn't that good, let's get rid of it. You know, maybe you want to spare the processing power or. Uh, you know, the time or you know, you just know you don't need that, that copy. Uh, so we can, you know, obviously do that. And you know, you'd cycle through, maybe this is a batch of six, let's say it's not, it's three, but you could leave it like that. Maybe you uh, had, let's say the last photo of a batch of three screw up. You could just get rid of that one and just say, you know, forget that one in the calculation. It may not come out quite the same as the others, but you'll still get a pretty good uh, result or maybe better than just one. And so yeah, Aurora's pretty good for that. And then we would continue regularly and uh, we would choose, I like that you can kind of have selections of your, your presets you've made because that's another thing I'll get into about this software is you can create a lot of great presets with it uh, for let's say processing different cameras that you use regularly or different uh, interior or exterior views let's say when you're batching you would uh, choose your save folder and i like to leave it at one folder and then i go to that folder all the time when i'm done and i move it to its home folder i find it an easier system to manage based on the way that this software works so i have this you know fresh hdr to move in my home pictures folder uh, and then, you know, I might set the custom text here when I'm exporting something with the address. And we can choose, uh, you know, TIFF. TIFF is what I would use. Maybe I've never tried Photoshop. That might be convenient, but, you know, I'm happy with this. 16 bits. And leaving everything else the same actual size. Advanced, what do I have? No, uh... No sharpening, I just want the raw photo. I'm going to process it after in Lightroom before I export because I have a workflow that involves that. And I never use auto alignment because I know the photos I take, I am very careful not to move the camera at all. And uh, I save the processing time that way. And same with, you know, ghost reduction. Uh, I, I don't do that. So. Chromatic aberration though I do turn on because it is much harder to remove it once you've had a, a tone compressed image than when you are working from uh, you know, a regular dynamic range you could say from the sensor. So at that point you could process it and you know this batch of however many might take uh, of 30 megapixel photos would take probably 10 minutes on this computer, but we are not going to do that. I'm going to just get into some single photo processing. So for that, we'll go back here. Let's just start with some JPEGs. And boom. And let's go in here. So you'll see it's working pretty fast. There we go. I like it now. Uh, this is one of the things we like is is that we uh, you know you can have certain things let's say drone HDR this is um, if I was going to stitch or sorry combine photos from my drone I might like to use this profile because it it makes corrections the way that I know the drone sensor captures things and you know I put dates in front of all these so I know what's my most recent so when I first got this software, 2020 08, August is, uh, you know, one of my early presets. And then as 
I gradually move on, it evolves slightly, you could say. That's how I might use it before I finish it in Photoshop nowadays. Uh, and I always pass, pass my images through Photoshop, as I mentioned, so I'm just really looking for a good base image, kind of similar to what a good uh, raw exposure might look like, and that you know, it doesn't have a ton of contrast necessarily, uh, and I'm not looking for that right now. So I'm just looking for a good overall dynamic range and bringing all the elements into one, naturally looking. Now, what we are going to do is also look at some of the, um, you know, it's really easy to make your own presets, but they, it also comes with some, so it's got its own architecture. This is, uh, you know, aerial photography, and it's kind of cool that you can then go in and do further tweaks on your own and you can export them. So the way we're working it now is working on the single image and we can export those as single images, um, as JPEGs, TIFFs and, and whatever. And also, let's say you work on one photo of a collection from a certain day with certain lighting, you could save, save your, your single nice preset of that and then apply it to the rest of the collection. So, you know, there's lots of ways to make workflow timeline saving stuff, which is great. Uh, you'll find familiar controls if you're used to Lightroom, which is my primary editing software. Uh, you know, you get all these sliders, lots of familiar names, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, which work in the way you'd expect. Same with saturation, vibrance. Um, and you know, obviously lots of extra fine tuning controls, including curves free to use with, you know, Luma and RGB, uh, single color changes. Let's say if you know your sensor has a problem doing one thing or another. And if you, you know, this is in the case of, of saving presets, even with that, let's say, and then, um, in the case of editing single artistic photos, especially, you know, landscape photos, you might uh, really appreciate having all of this inside your, your software. You have some decent painting materials or, you know, painting tools that you can, you can even use some of these, these exposure features. I don't really use it like that. Uh, I kind of prefer the batching method for everything that I shoot. Uh, you get lots of control over making sure that you never get these, you know, you're not seeing any halos here, which is kind of the least favorite thing of, of most uh, HDR software. And it's, it's handling color mixtures pretty well. Uh, and this is straight out, there's no individual color, no white balance adjustments. So, you know, what I'm saying is it's doing a good job of it all by itself, doesn't need much of your interaction this is a cloudy day lots of overcast skies it's snowing kind of a blizzard you'd expect a lot of blue light um, but you know it's it's coming out pretty neutral white like the the way you'd expect it and and yeah so you know finishing off the export pretty easy wherever you want to desktop I think we'll leave it at that so thanks for watching i've got some uh, more videos in the works especially on how to shoot some bracketed images the way i do for real estate photography and some other cool tools that can help you along the way so we'll see you next time